After hitting her head, woman claimed to have memories of a past life. There are some who believe in reincarnation, the idea that a soul is reborn again and again, instead of only living one life. One story that seemingly supports their claim is Dorothy Edie's. A childhood accident supposedly opened up a connection to a past life, but Dorothy had as many skeptics as she did believers. Years later, we're still not sure what to make of her incredible claims. When Dorothy was only three years old, she suffered a dangerous fall down the stairs in her home. First responders declared her dead on the scene, but 1907 wouldn't bring an end to young Dorothy, as a shock doctor discovered about an hour after the incident. When the doctor arrived at the Edie home, Dorothy was awake and interacting with her family like her old self. With a few subtle differences, the girl kept speaking in an unfamiliar accent and demanding to be taken home to an unknown location. To her family's dismay, Dorothy kept up this persona for weeks after her recovery. Her strange inflections and mentions of faraway places became a serious issue when she suffered the worst indignity possible, getting kicked out of Sunday school. This was because the young girl developed an interest in Egyptian religion and compared Christianity to it in front of the other students. Where this influence came from, her family couldn't say, but another incident proved that Dorothy's Egyptian obsession was anything but a phase. A year later, Dorothy visited the British Museum with her parents. This London attraction is famous for its collection of Egyptian artifacts, and when Dorothy saw them in person, she ran around the exhibit floor with uncontrollable excitement. She kissed statues' feet and screamed, These are my people! Once her parents tried to leave, Dorothy threw a tantrum as they forced her out. At home, she had dreams that felt real. This connection made Dorothy believe these were uncovered memories. When Dorothy saw a picture of the Temple of Seti I and claimed this was the same building from her dream, the Pharaoh Seti I would also come to her and wander around the temple too. Dorothy normally hated school, but once her class got into ancient Egyptian unit, she passionately participated. Eventually, this wasn't enough, and she skipped class to visit local Egyptian exhibits. During one of these trips, she met Wallace Budge. Wallace worked as an Egyptologist for the British Museum and recognized Dorothy's passion for Egypt. He encouraged her to learn to read hieroglyphics. Quickly, Dorothy became a translation expert. She always claimed that she knew them from her old life. This one added to her obsession and insistence that she had a connection to the ancient kingdom, but not everyone in the Edie circle was so enthusiastic. Her parents were worried about her mental health and subjected Dorothy to a range of invasive tests at sanitariums. She never stopped having the dreams no matter what the doctor said. Dorothy would not refute her claims. Eventually, Dorothy was free from the terrible asylum. At 27, she married Imam Abdel Megid, an Egyptian Londoner. They moved to Cairo and had a son that Dorothy insisted they named Seti, after the pharaoh from her dreams. As Seti's mother, Dorothy now called herself Om Seti, or Mother of Seti, and she flourished under her new identity. In the process, her marriage to Imam was destroyed. He moved to Iraq while Om Seti and Seti remained in Egypt. While married to Imam, Om Seti continued to have realistic dreams about ancient Egypt in which she was visited by her pharaoh and even Horus, the Egyptian god of the sky. Horus gave her more knowledge about her past life. According to Horus, Om Seti was once a woman named Bent Rashit, meaning Harp of Joy. She lived in the temple and was the daughter of a soldier and vegetable merchant. When her mom died, she became the temple's property. Bent Rashid was trained to be a priestess in her new life. While she worked, her and the pharaoh, Seti I, had a secret relationship, one that ended in an unwanted pregnancy. Bent Rashid was supposed to remain a virgin in dedication to the goddess Isis. To save Seti's image, Bent Rashid committed suicide. In return, he visited her, now Dorothy, in her dreams and answered her questions about ancient Egypt. For instance, he helped her rediscover the site of a garden outside the temple of Seti I. Upon excavation, it was there. Dorothy eventually moved to Abydos, which was much closer to the temple. 
There, she was the first female droughtsman for the Department of Antiquity, and her connection to Egypt was put to the test by others. The resident chief inspector asked Dorothy to identify paintings in a poorly lit room that the public didn't have access to. She surprised the man by accurately naming each piece, cementing her reputation as knowledgeable Egyptologist. Dorothy helped a variety of researchers with their difficult hieroglyphic translations, earning great respect from her peers. Whether or not she had an actual connection to Egypt, her passion for the nation helped advance plenty of historical research about the site. Dorothy died in 1981 at 77. She designed her own tomb, but wasn't laid to rest there due to its violation of various health laws. Instead, she was buried in a lonely desert grave, now only remembered for her accomplishments, but her story continues to fascinate experts. The great Carl Sagan deemed her a lively, intelligent, dedicated woman who made real contributions to Egyptology, nevertheless carried strong childhood adolescent fantasies. Ultimately, Dorothy's credibility can't be proven or disproven. To get the true answer, we may have to compare her to others who experienced inexplicable memories.